Hey, what's up? It's Matt with the Movement System. We're going to be talking about levers today, guys. We're going to talk about first class, second class, and third class levers. We're going to talk about mechanical advantage, torque, moment arms, and then go into examples of muscles of each class. And if you stick around to the end, we'll go through those practice cases and go into all the details here. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so let's start talking through the third class lever. This is the most common class of lever in the body. An example of this would be a bicep curl. So if you think about a bicep, the tendon of the bicep actually comes in inserts on the front of the forearm here. So we have, this would be the upper arm and then this would be the forearm represented in green. The muscle force comes to the front of the forearm here and points up because that muscle is gonna shorten and go up towards the shoulder here. So. What we have here is represented in red, the muscle force, and then all the way over here, where the hand would be, would be the weight, or the force resistance. So this would be the force of the dumbbell or the cable or whatever's in the hand. Now, let's talk about the moment arms. So moment arm is the distance from the bending point, which is the fulcrum. So this green dot here is the fulcrum. From the fulcrum to the muscle attachment, so this would be the distal attachment of the bicep, that distance is gonna be the moment arm of the muscle. Over here, the distance from the fulcrum to where the resistance is applied, so the point where the resistance pushes down in the hand, that's gonna be our moment arm of resistance. Now we're doing this example at 90 degrees to keep it simple here, and the torque, in this case, the torque is the force that causes rotation. So at 90 degrees, all the muscle force applied and all the force of the resistance applied is gonna to create torque. So the, the distance from the fulcrum to that point is the moment arm. So you could do this for the torque of the muscle first. So the torque of a muscle would be the force of the muscle times the moment arm of the muscle. So that length away from the fulcrum times the force applied. And that's, that's the amount that that force is going to cause rotation around the fulcrum. So that's what we're talking about torque here. All right, so let's get into mechanical advantage. Mechanical advantage is a simple ratio of the moment arms. Force doesn't matter for mechanical advantage. It's just a ratio of the moment arm of the muscle to the moment arm of the resistance. In most muscles in the body, most muscles are third class levers. In most muscles, the mechanical advantage is somewhat uh, disadvantaged, I guess, for the muscle. So the moment arm of the muscle is this smaller distance, this one, whereas the resistance is applied much farther away from the fulcrum at a distance of, say, four. So in this case, the muscle has to work four times as hard as the force of the resistance to overcome this mechanical advantage. So one way to think about this is if you're pushing on a door, the farther away from the hinge that you push, the easier the door is to push. If you're pushing close to the hinge, that's gonna make the door harder to push. And that represents kind of the workload of the muscle here, trying to act really close to the fulcrum. So now let's talk about whenever that muscle has to work at different joint angles. So let's use the example of a bicep curl here with a third class lever. This would be the very shortened position of a bicep curl when the elbow is flexed. Now, the, the moment arm of the muscle is no longer this distance from the fulcrum to the point of the applied force. Instead, it's the distance away if it were to be at a 90 degree angle. So now, instead of just taking this distance from the point of the muscle being applied to that green point, we have to kind of draw a line, drop it down from where that muscle force is applied and then drop a line down from the fulcrum and then find that distance. So the moment arm of the muscle gets shorter as you contract farther and get it to a steeper joint angle. The greatest moment arm of the muscle is at a 90 degree angle. This is where the moment arm of the muscle is at its longest point because it gets a maximal horizontal distance away from the fulcrum. So at a 90 degree angle, you get optimal torque for a given muscle force. At an obtuse angle here, this is as you're, le as you're lengthening down that muscle, the same principle applies here. That moment arm is gonna get shorter again. And the reason that moment arm gets shorter again is because we're no longer at that 90 degree angle. So we have to draw that line down and it's again the horizontal distance from the fulcrum to where that muscle force is applied. All right, so now let's jump into the differences between a first, second, and a third class lever. Let's talk about a first class lever. 
An example of this is a tricep. So if you can imagine, here's the upper arm, here's the forearm, and then here's that elbow, which is the fulcrum. So the, the spot where the elbow bends is the fulcrum, and in this case of the tricep, the muscle force is on the back of the elbow. So this, this over here would be behind the elbow. That's where the, where the tricep actually inserts. So the muscle force is applied on the opposite side of the fulcrum as the resistance. So resistance is on one side of the fulcrum, the muscle force is on the other, and that's what makes this a first class lever. The tricep is one of the only examples of a first class lever in the body. Again, most muscles are third class levers. Now let's talk about the moment arm of the muscle and the moment arm of the resistance. In this case, the moment arm of the resistance is still pretty long, that whole length of the forearm. The moment arm of the muscle is still pretty short. It's that muscle attachment right next to the fulcrum. So in this case, the moment arm of the muscle is shorter than the moment arm of the resistance. All right, so let's talk about a second class lever here. In this case, this is probably the oddest muscle. The only real example of this is the calf muscle, the calf raise. So in this case, we're thinking here, the lower leg, the shin, and then down here is the foot, and then over here is the toes. So the toes is actually what you kind of go up on for a calf raise, so that's our fulcrum point. So the fulcrum point, we, we, we go up onto the toes, that's where we hinge, so that's gonna be our fulcrum point. Now here's where it gets interesting. The Achilles tendon for the calf muscle is all the way back here behind the ankle joint. The ankle joint is not our fulcrum. So actually, the, the distance or the moment arm of the muscle force is all the way from the, fo from the force applied for, through the Achilles tendon all the way down to the toes here where you go up on your toes and that's the actual fulcrum point. So that moment arm is, is really big. The center of mass of your body drops kind of straight down through your foot here and we represent that as the force of the resistance. That's, again, if you're standing and doing a calf raise, that's the center of mass of your body dropping right between the force of the muscle and the fulcrum. Now, because it goes force of the muscle, then the force of the resistance, then the fulcrum, that's what makes this a second class lever. So don't confuse yourself by the ankle joint in this example, because the ankle joint's not the fulcrum. We're thinking this point all the way down here is the fulcrum. What really makes this that second class lever is that it's muscle force, then force of the resistance, and then the fulcrum. So let's talk about an example here. The moment arm of the muscle is that full length from the fulcrum to the force applied for the muscle. That is gonna be longer than the moment arm of the resistance. The mo this is the only case of all three muscles where the moment arm of the resistance is actually shorter than the moment arm of the muscle. All right, and let's move on to third class levers here and reinforce this, because this is the, the most important one here, guys. So this again is the example of a bicep. We have the elbow where the elbow joint is the hinge. This is the bicep tendon, the distal bicep attachment that's, that's pulling up on that forearm. In this case, the moment arm of the muscle is from the fulcrum to where that force is applied, and the moment arm of the resistance is that full distance from the fulcrum to where the resistance is applied downward. So in this case, moment arm of the muscle, this shorter distance, is less than the moment arm of the resistance, this longer distance. All right, let's go through a practice question here. So in a second class lever, is there a mechanical advantage for the resistance or for the muscle? So in this case, we have the moment arm of the muscle is longer than the moment arm of the resistance. So therefore, guys, the mechanical advantage is actually in this case to the muscle. So the muscle has to apply less force than the resistance. All right, let's do another example here, guys. So during a bent over row, we we're doing a slow and controlled concentric and eccentric. What muscle levers are acting at the elbow. Well, in this case, we know that the biceps are pulling up and the triceps are gonna eccentrically contract and kind of control on the way down of that row. So in this case, we're gonna have a first and a third class lever working at the elbow joint during a bent over row. All right, so let's do one more example here. So whenever you're lowering a bicep curl from a 90 degree angle down, 
Are we going to increase or decrease the moment arm of the muscle, or is it gonna stay the same? Well, let's think about it. We're going from this 90 degree angle, and we know that the moment arm of the muscle at 90 degrees is at its longest point. As you're lowering down eccentrically, we're gonna bring that muscle force a little bit closer to the fulcrum in terms of horizontal distance, and therefore the moment arm of the muscle is gonna decrease as you increase the angle of that elbow joint. All right guys, so I hope that video helped. If it did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you do have any other questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe for more useful videos like this. And lastly, if you want more information, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. I post a lot of different pictures and videos that are really helpful on there. So at the movement system, go ahead and uh, check me out on there. All right guys, thanks a lot. I'll see you in the next one.